Hi, welcome to episode four of Lynn and Highly Effective Physical Education with Lynn and Lynn. My name is Lynn Hefley. I'm a physical education teacher in the Huntington School District. I teach K, uh, grades K to four, and I'm the vice president of the Suffolk Zone here on Long Island. And I am the president and founder of Literature Enhanced, Literature Enhanced Physical Education. And here's my co-host, Lynn Burrows. Hi, I'm Lynn Burrows. Um, I blog at lovepe.me. I teach at a K-5 elementary school in Fraser, Colorado, a very rural um, area. And uh, Lynn and I met through Twitter, probably the best professional development ever, and decided we'd start these hangouts. So go ahead and start, Lynn. Okay, um, this week I wanted to start off by talking about the trip that we're taking out towards you. Uh, for those of you that are new to our Hangouts, uh, my students are wearing move bands. Move bands are an accelerometer that they wear on their wrist, and we record at the end of each day how far they've traveled. And once every day, the teacher will um, log in how many miles their class has gone, and we're moving across America, and our first stop is going to be in Austin, Texas, to uh, meet Jim DeLine's physical education class. And when we get there, we're going to have a Google Hangout or a Skype. We haven't decided yet. And um, we're going to present like a dance or something to them. And then after we go to uh, Austin, Texas, we're going to head up to you, Lynn, and visit your class. Now, the exciting thing was the other day um, I talked to Mike Graham online, and we're going to go visit him. I believe he's in Wisconsin. I hope I'm not getting that wrong. And after I posted that on Twitter, Twitter um, uh oh, I'm forgetting his name. Uh, I want to say it's Mike McDonald in Illinois. Oh, I'm so bad. I, I should have got these down correct before I uh, start talking about this. But we're going to visit him on the way back. So now we have four stops. We're doing a big circle around the United States. And um, so I presented this to my principal, and. Uh, he's having us present to the school board. Every school district has to present uh, 15 minutes at an evening meeting. So our students are going to come with us and they're going to present the whole project. And um, another thing that we're doing with it is our classroom teacher is when we get to Austin, Texas, they're going to write postcards to their family about what they saw in Austin, Texas, and then they're going to mail their postcards to their family. So each time we get to a different stop, there'll be a writing assignment involved with it too. So it's really starting to develop into a really nice interdisciplinary program in our, in our building. So I'm pretty excited about that. Um, I apologize to the uh, other phys ed teachers that I didn't get their names and places correct, I'm sure. So that's our first exciting thing. How about you? Um, I I think that's really exciting. What what grade are you doing? Is it third grade? Is that what you said? Yes, I'm uh, working with one third grade class now. It's kind of our trial. I have about 70 move bands. A couple of them um, lost their power because I didn't use them for a while. So I'm kind of trying it out this year with one class that I have by myself because sometimes, like I told you, we teach two classes and it, it might just be too much for two classes. And um, the, they also, because now I can leave them with them, they've been wearing them all day long and getting to, it kind of motivates them at recess to move and it motivates the teacher to get them up during class. So it's kind of being a great thing to get the kids to move outside of phys ed. Well, um, I'm hoping by the time you get to Fraser that I have my third graders um, up and going with it. We haven't started, we use the step counters so I'll make sure I have them really well versed on it, and maybe we'll join you on the trip back. I love the idea that you're doing the <clears throat> writing postcards from different towns where you're meeting with different PE teachers, but I think it'd be best if your third grade maybe met my third grade. So I'll do the I'll do the same grade. I'm really excited about this. I'll do the same grade, and um, maybe we'll we'll make a trip back with you or something. That would be great. Yeah, I'm excited about it. So um, I was going to talk about uh, just what, what recently has been happening. 
First of all, I am so honored and so excited that um, I just found out on Thursday at the end of the day that um, I was awarded Central District Teacher of the Year. So um, really just over the moon about that. There is an applause button here that I wish I had figured out how to use. Um, congratulations. Thank you. That's awesome. Thank you. Yeah, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm really humbled by it because I know, like, just even in our state, the Teachers of the Year, the Colorado Teachers of the Year, you know, they're really my heroes. They're, um, I follow them and know what they do and, and uh, try to copy their practices. And so even just to just be <clears throat> in the same um, sentence as them or, like, for even them to know my name, I'm... Um, I'm 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 really honored by that. So yeah, I'm super excited. Um, I'm not sure what all it entails. I think um, we'll be heading to Minnesota in February. So I'm excited to meet those central um, teachers that I know through Twitter. Um, meet them in person. Um, but yeah, I'm super excited. On top of everything else that's that happened, I uh, I've been doing a lot of presenting and um, still have some presentations to come up. This last Friday I just presented on um, using Google Drive, no, using Google Forms to our school district just regular ed teachers and how to use Google Forms not just for, um, <clears throat> excuse me, not just for assessing but for uh, informing and I'm really excited about what's happening there. I, um, I play this game called Flashcard Tag and I probably, I, I, I'm sure I took it from somebody because I'm not, I'm not so creative. I invented it. But um, anyway, my kids come in. I think it's, I think it's maybe your idea. That's why I'm saying that. Is they have flashcards and then they, um, they're trying to get rid of their cards. So they, it, they try to tag someone. If they tag them, they get to flash. And if the child gets the answer right. Nothing happens, but if they get the answer wrong or if they can't answer immediately, they get to give them the tagger gets to give that person their flashcard, and um, everybody's it. And they love that game. And I realize that some of them are so fantastic at tag that they need more of a challenge. And some of my kids are so um, unable to like make a juke or anything that they um, are constantly getting tagged. And we play that you can only tag somebody the same person once. So anyway, I did this thing with Google Forms where um, if they are out of cards, they go scan one QR code and that takes them to a form asking them to think like Goldilocks and try to come up with a perfect um, challenge. So, you know, are you going to try to tag kids below the waist? Or are you going to try to tag kids with your non-dominant hand? Can you make your boundaries smaller so it's easier for kids to tag you? Um, Try try a new fake and just use that fake when someone is chasing you. And then my kids who have more than um, more than five cards because they start with with three. So my kids who have more than five cards, they go and scan a different QR code. And it's a little clip I got off of YouTube of a fake. So you know they lean one way and then they take off the other way. And they watch that, the instructions are watch this twice, try it twice, and then join back in. And so my kids who the game is perfect for stay in the activity the whole time. And my kids who it's too easy, they go out and make it more challenging. You know, they, they get a challenge and then... Um, so anyway, I, I presented on how to use Google Forms to kind of make it um, to inform instead of assess. Um, and we went through all the all the different ways to make Google Forms and, and how easy it is. And then um, I also presented on portfolios. You know, that was a goal that I had last year and I kind of backed out because I just was so overwhelmed by the idea. And I've, I've got them started this year and so I presented um, half the day on um, creating student portfolios using Google. And actually that was I, I want to say that I got that idea from Joey Fife just on a really simple kind of hack on how to do it um, really easily. So um, presenting on technology and then I presented at our state conference and I presented at our state conference I got to present with the past Colorado Teachers of the Year which was um, you know gosh I was just 
really kind of starstruck. <laughs> and I presented on instant activities. And I have that, um, I have the, I have uh, really not the whole resource guide, but I have like all the activities I presented on my website, I mean on my blog, lovep.me. And I put it, I want to say I titled it under um, Co Wayford or Shape Colorado. It's one of the tabs at the top. And it's just, a bunch of different um, instant activities and how to make them, how how I use instant activities to get kids moving right away, assess, integrate, um, uh, common core, and um, try to work on some sort of knowledge skill as well. And so um, I think my favorite new tag game, like as an instant activity, we call it know-it-all tag. And so my it's get um, index cards. I love using index cards for lots of different things, but my kids get these index cards that just have a question on it that has their um, one of their evidence outcomes, like fourth grade has to know um, all the, what does the F and FIT stand for, what does the I stand for, what is um, uh, the principles of training, what are they talking about in specificity, um, they have to know all five health related fitness components, how to make them, how to improve each one, I mean, their knowledge content is so huge. And one of them is they have to know the proper way to lift something heavy. Anyway, it's these things that are kind of, they have to know how many hours of sleep they're supposed to get. These things that you really don't want to take time to teach a whole lesson on, or maybe, like, I don't have time to teach a whole lesson on, but I still want them to learn. So anyway, my the, the cards have the, all those questions on them. And then kid who's it starts with a, or we have a bunch of kids that are at, so we have like four kids who are at, they start with a little stack of cards and when they tag somebody they give them a card and then they have to come up to me if they know the answer and if they don't know the answer I have a bulletin board out in the hallway and they can go out and look for the answer. It's actually a bulletin board and a whiteboard so quite a bit of information is on there and then they come, come in, tell me the answer, give me the card and when the it runs out of cards they pick a new it and I just hand them some more. So um, really great way to like figure out, okay, none of my kids know how to lift something heavy and they all know the five components of health-related fitness. It it's, was just a really quick assessment. So that's one of the things I presented on at, um, we changed our name, by the way, to Shape Colorado. Oh, nice. Yeah, so we um, I presented on that and... I love um, that I, idea. And I don't want you to skip forward too much because I want to comment that I love that idea. And I'm going to definitely use that because I'm big into the cognitive assessment part right now. Um, I also want to say that your tag game, although it's not, wasn't my idea, we actually met probably online a long time ago because when I first started my website, you added that tag game to my Common Core page. So that's probably the first time we met when you added that tag game and it's still on my Common Core page. So, um, yeah, we're on the, the same wavelength when it comes to the cognitive part. And I love your technology. Um, what grade level do you use the, the Google uh, QR code idea with? Well, I, I do a bunch of different um, Google Forms, but that particular one where they're tagging um, and when they run out of cards or they have too many cards, I do that third, fourth, and fifth. And then um, I just figured out this week how to, uh, well, my, uh, so I do it a couple couple different ways. So my second, third, fourth, and fifth graders, um, we have to award for positive behavior one student every class period, which to me is like this huge paperwork nightmare. So um, instead of awarding them, instead of handing them something and me keeping track of it and trying to write it down at the end of class because I really like to have that time at the end of class to finish conversations and kind of wrap things up and um, so instead my um, my PBIS person it's the acronym for positive behavior something system intervention yeah yeah anyway um, that that person um, grabs the iPad, scans a QR code, and it takes them to a little form that has balloons on it. It says, congratulations, you're the, um, we call it SOAR, not like S-O-R-E, 
but we're the Fraser Valley Eagles, so we call it S O A R, that kind of soar. And um, we are the soar person, and they get to scan that QR code. Um, it takes them to the congratulations, and then it, they put in their name and they put in um, what they did that was exceptional. And um, my second through fifth graders do that. So they get practice typing on the iPad, which they all need for um, the new online assessments. Um, and it sends me a record so I don't have to try to keep track of who's received it, who hasn't, what they're doing to receive it. Um, so I'm thinking that's primarily how I'm, use, how I'm using them um, right now, those forms. Oops, sorry. That's great. I wish that I, I mean, I don't have um, iPads yet or any of that, and I'm waiting until I get enough things that I feel like are educationally sound before I put the grant in to get them because I don't want to order something that I'm not using. So that's why I like to hear what you're doing with them. We only go K-4, so I see them being used like third and fourth grade. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I'm, I'm just waiting. I'm not there yet. I haven't really bought into the iPads in the gym yet just because I don't want them to go to waste until I get, you know, I need the information first and I need to use them first. I have used them. Um, I, I think I told you I teach one class at the middle school this year, and it's finally I'm finally starting to get comfortable with it. But the first thing I did with the um, Google Forms is I made a an extra credit assignment that I put up on my website, so the students that want to get extra credit go can go to the website. They have to view a video. It's the video of exercise makes you happy. I don't know if you've seen it. It's really cute. Yeah. So they have to watch the video and then they go to Google Forms and answer questions to get the extra credit. And primarily I just wanted students to, you know, there was a lot of complaining going on about why we have to do the fitness part, why can't we just get into an activity, why can't we, and I wanted to show them that, you know, exercise first period in the morning is when I have them, it makes you happy. And they really are leaving happy even though they start off the day grumpy about having to move first period. So that's the only way I've used Google Forms so far. Well, I think it's I think it's a um, it's a great tool to do a survey with. What I presented on, it's a great tool to do a survey with. It's a great tool to do like a quick assessment. And there's a really easy way using this pro this thing called an add-on Flubaroo where you can actually um, it can grade it. So if you assess and want to grade. Um, you can use it to inform, like with my math tag game. And um, another really cool thing that you can do with Google Form is that you can, um, if you have a multiple choice question or a check all that apply, one of the check boxes, um, I think the very coolest thing right now that I like about Google Form is that you can say, send the person to a page based on their answer. So say I ask the kids a question like, um, how do you feel about your ability to, um, let's just take shoot a basket. I don't know that I would actually ask them that, but just for example. Um, and if they say, I feel terrible, I can't do it, based on that answer, I can take them to another page that is like a little instructional video, and I give them specific instructions on um, how I want them to practice, and then um, then they're done with me. Then a second kid who might answer, um, I feel okay, but I could use some more practice. I, I'm not really sure. You know, I can I can put in different answers for them. But say I said something like, um, I can't. I don't make it all the time. So I could send them to another like information or video or something saying, um, your percentage should be this. This is how you increase your percentage. And then my kid who says, I'm super great at basketball, um, it could send them to a page where they're getting a challenge, like, um, have you tried shooting this? Or maybe the next step for you is a layup. Or um, So the ability to differentiate on those Google Forms, I think, is so powerful. So how many um, tablets do you have? 
Well, in the um, each each teacher in our district has um, we have a laptop that we work off of, and then we also have an iPad. But then our school has an iPad library, so we have ten iPads we can check out um, anytime. And we're switched. Our whole school district is kind of going to Chromebooks, and so people are kind of moving away from the iPads. So typically on any day, I have available ten. And if if someone else has checked them out, if if I want to, I can go around to all the other teachers in our um, building and ask just to borrow their iPads because they all have a personal iPad, or not a personal, but a classroom iPad as well. So I typically have 10, 10 iPads accessible to me. But I wanted to, you had said that you weren't sure if you wanted, like you weren't sure about the um, soundness, you know, the teaching soundness before you write a grant. The, I think that I think probably the um, the most effective way I've used iPads isn't in the scanning the Google Forms. I mean, I think that's cool because it makes me all of a sudden now I'm one. I'm two teachers because I'm teaching over here somehow with this iPad. But I think probably the most effective way is that when the kids and I'm going to do this the next week is um, when they videotape each other's movement. So they videotape their running form or they're videotaping like next week we're going to um, start a gymnastics unit and um, they're going to videotape some skills and then one of the standards is that they can put, um, they can combine a bunch of different skills into a routine. And so when, when they have those iPads and they're videotaping each other and they watch that video of themselves, the improvement is crazy. I could be I could be telling them on any skill, whether it's throwing, you know, keep your elbow up, keep your elbow up, keep your elbow up, step with the opposite foot, step with the opposite foot, you know, I'm like doing that constant speaking thing. And as soon as they see themselves, they change it. With with not that I don't want to be teaching them, but I don't even have to make a correction. And they're, they'll correct their form, and like in something like dance or gymnastics, when it's so aesthetic, they make those aesthetic changes without me correcting them, like I'm judging them. Do you know what I mean? Like I'm saying, you know, your legs aren't straight. That, you know, I just really want them to be able to transfer their weight. But they make those aesthetic changes once they see themselves. All right, I, I think I've done that with my adaptive classes a little bit, and it was really helpful. I do think that, you know, it's, it's, a, it's where I have to go next. So I'm glad that I'm learning from you how I can proceed when I get there. Because um, I do a lot of my uh, cognitive through, you know, visual things that I paste up old school, you know, and I'm going to get there with the technology. I will. All right, so are you all... What else? Well, I, I did want to say, if you're interested in using technology in PE, um, I'll put in a little plug, um, because I am presenting. I even have a brochure. It's so awesome. I have, I've never had my own brochure. Um, it's through... Um, Bureau of Educational Research, and so I'm kind of on a trial, um, do they like me, do I like them, year with them, they um, contacted me and asked me to be a presenter, and so after talking about what topics might um, be interesting to PE teachers, we came up with technology and PE. So I'm presenting best technology resources to enhance your physical education program, and I'm going to be in a town near you. Um, Cherry Hill, New Jersey's Ch Cherry Hill, New Jersey, uh, uh, January twenty eighth. So um, that would be so cool if you came. <laughs> I would love to make it out there. We're gonna have to check the calendar, see what day it is, and see if I can get down there. Are they keeping you overnight? Do you know? They must be keeping you overnight. Um, it's. I, I fly in the night before, <clears throat> excuse me, so I fly in the 27th, but then I must fly out right away because on the 29th I present in Chicago. So, oh uh, 
Yeah, so I'm in Chicago on the 29th and then St. Louis on February 25th and then back in Denver on February 26th. So it's kind of a, uh, you know, bam, 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 bam. I'm not really sure how it's going to work. Like I said, it's just trial basis. I'm not sure they're going to like me well enough to keep me around. Um, but anyway, that's I, I'm really excited about it. It's so well deserved, and I uh, applaud you, and good luck with that, and I hope I get to see you when you come out. <laughs> Thanks. Um, I'm presenting next Monday in, at the Massachusetts uh, State Convention. So I'm presenting um, Balancing Physical Education, Physical Activity, and the Common Core. So that's my presentation. So um, let me show you one of the things that I we talked about, you know, you, we're Right now, we're both talking about the cognitive domain, and I want to share a little video. It's like two and a half minutes that I just put together and put up on YouTube. Share. Um, let's see. Okay, I'm probably not doing this right. I think you are. You just um, you have. There you go. Oh, there I am. That's your <laughs> All right, I gotta get to the one I want here. Let's see. We did this well last time. Right. Hang on, I'll do it. We gotta. Sh um. I think you had it. You see it. The There's a thing maybe at the bottom where you click. Oh. You have, there you go. Oh, there I am. There you are. That's it. <laughs> All right, I gotta get to the one I want. Oh no. Okay, I'm back, but I still haven't shared my screen properly. Well, I'm surprised you have time to hang out and meet if you're putting together a presentation, and I know how much time that takes. Um, it closed out the one that I wanted to do. Here, uh, well, I'm so depressed about this. I want to get it back up because I really had a lot of information on it. So do you have something else to talk about right now? Yeah, I'll talk, and then you can look for it. Is that what you're thinking? Yeah, I think that's a good idea. Okay. So um, while Lynn looks for her video, um, I can just go into a few more of our uh, instant activities I played at our, our instant activities I introduced at um, our, it's called Shape Colorado now. And another one was a tag game that most people are pretty familiar with called Band-Aid Tag. Um, where you tag some, everybody's in it, and the first time you get tagged, you cover up the place where you get tagged, and then the second place you get tagged, you go typically out to the sidelines and perform some sort of physical activity, jumping jacks or push-ups or something. And so we transformed that to, like, how could we make that um, a knowledge content game? And so... Um, kids were either given a card that said quadriceps or hamstrings and when you tag the person um, you have to touch like if I have the card that says hamstrings when I get tagged instead of just tagging where they tag me I have to um, put one hand on my hamstrings if I have the hamstrings card mm -hmm. the next time I get tagged I have to go to the sideline and show a way to strengthen my hamstrings or you could do it like the second time you get tagged, you have to go and stretch their hamstrings. So you could have everybody have the same muscle. Um, you know, everyone's doing quadriceps. They have to touch their quadriceps the first time they get tagged. The second time they get tagged, they have to go show a way to strengthen or stretch. So just a really simple game that we already all play. I, I just, I don't understand why people are playing ridiculous games like Band-Aid Tag. I mean, I do understand because it's a fun warm-up and the kids like it, but it's not it's not teaching. It's so easy to add that cognitive domain in there. And um, so that was kind of my presentation on think about what you're already doing and how you can add that to it. Exactly. And I think that's a lot of um, 
you know, the Common Core ideas, we're already teaching so much, it's just you got to add that little extra that adds a cognitive part right. to it. You know, it's right. not a big change. It's supposed to be teaching cognitively. So right. When you that, don't take anything away. Yeah. So here we go. Is it there? Um, it's thinking about it. Right now it's just black. No. It doesn't look it says it's sharing. <laughs> um that's not well, good. My screen is just black. I'm down in the corner and then Yeah, I see. It says it's sharing though. That's a drag. Okay. Huh. Well, if um, if you're not able to pull it up, where I know that I saw it on Google this morning. Okay. Where, where what's the address of it? Could somebody find it based on the address? Yeah, if they go to Lynn Heffley on um, you know on YouTube and go to my videos, it'll come up. Okay. Right. Well, let me tell talk about one of the um, what we're doing right now. We're teaching spatial awareness and locomotor skills. And hopefully, maybe we'll see. This is not gonna come up. Let's see if this one will come up. Are you teaching this also from a um, one of your stories? Yes. Okay. So let's try this here. Does this? Why is this? It's really bothering me. No. Both of the things I wanted to share with you are on. Yeah, it says you are screen sharing. It seems like there's a little um, down. Hmm. There, I do see it. Teaching spatial awareness. Oh, you had it. Is it there? No, you're back, but you did just have it. You had the tunnel, and then it came up, and we saw it. It's so bizarre. Oh, I'm depressed. Technology, right. Yeah. That's anyway. what when I present. I have the same thing when I get kind of nervous and then all of a sudden I can't remember what to do. Like how to solve a problem. A technology problem, that is. Yeah. I have. So there's the tunnel. And it's right behind that. So it looks like if you drag that there. Now we see it. Hooray. You see it? How, what do you do you see now? Um see suggestions for a common core friendly gym. All right, here's the first one. Suggestions for a common core friendly gym. What did you learn in PE today? Doesn't just mean physically. As physical educators, we teach and our students should be learning in the cognitive social and physical domains. The Common Core Standards help physical education teachers focus on the cognitive domain. An easy way to begin in corporate standards in your gym is to display posters with motivational sayings for students to read. Next, add number charts. Anytime an activity requires counting or scoring, use a grade level appropriate number system. Have contests that require reading, writing, and the analysis of health and physical education information. Use the winners of your contests to display your performance cues in both a written and illustrated manner. Create word quilts that highlight a physical education vocabulary word from the unit you are teaching. Have students read and perform an instant activity when they enter the gym. Review vocabulary, muscle groups, fitness concepts, and other physical education information through an all-school Jeopardy game. Make waiting in line time meaningful. Place vocabulary words and other resources at the end of lines for students to quiz one another. Download Waiting Your Turn cards, crossword puzzles, and word searches at leap.com for unprepared and medically excused students. Give extra credit writing assignments for enrichment. Motivate and educate your K-3 students through the use of literature-enhanced 
physical education teacher resources. The fictional stories and unit plans available include Bugs and Bubbles for volleying, Widgets batting lessons for hitting off a tee, Clean up your backyard for overhand throwing, PE under the sea for underhand rolling, Swish for ball handling and shooting, Zinni's Driving School for locomotor skills and spatial awareness, and Serial Soccer for kicking, passing, and ball control skills. Coming soon, hamburger hockey. Mm -hmm. So there you go. For more Common Core ideas for physical education, visit www.leapincorporated.com. <laughs> so that's um, my that's our um, how I use common a lot of the cognitive stuff that I get across to the kids trying to have it up visually and having them do stuff while they're waiting in line the, um, I like the hamburger hockey that sounds really cute <laughs> well you know what's funny is that um, my principal came to me last week and the PTA, do you do uh, Parents as Reading Partners? Yes. Okay, so our Parents as Reading Partners is in um, January. So in January they have an end of the, uh, an assembly at the end and the PTA was looking for an author but they didn't have the money to spend on a, you know, an author. So he asked me to come in. I was like, well, all of my kids know all of my stories right now. Um, but they've been pressuring me to uh, serial soccer ends with, well, what are they going to have for dinner? And, uh, you know, the, the character says, oh, I hope it's hamburgers so that we can play hamburger hockey. So what um, I decided to do was for the for the uh, presentation at the end of part is I'm going to finally have put together uh, hamburger hockey. So I just almost finished the story and I'm sending the story out to my illustrator and for the um, assembly at the end of January we're going to Skype with my illustrator and I'm going to read hamburger hockey, the new story, and my illustrator is going to you know, put up all his new illustrations for hamburger hockey. So that's going to come out in January. I don't think it's going to be a teacher resource yet because I don't like to, I mean, all my teacher resources, there's something in the lessons that's unique and I really don't have a great, you know, hockey unit to uh, present. So it's going to start out as a children's book and then if I ever come up with a hockey unit that I think is is good, then I'll uh, make it into a uh, teacher's resource. It's really it's really great. You're very um, I don't know. It's it's amazing to me that you write books. <laughs> um, for some reason, you're muted. Okay. Sorry. Um, for some reason, it's not going back and forth between me and you when we talk, so I'm trying to mute and unmute. Um, it's kind of strange to me that people want to read my books, but the other day we had parent-teacher conferences, and one of the parents came to me and said, my son is obsessed with serial soccer. So I um, packaged up a book and sent it home with him on Friday, so I think he'll be excited. So... On that note, so let me see if I can share my other, what we're doing now is Zinni's Driving School. It's for spatial awareness and locomotor skills. And here's why this story came out. Um, it actually came out pretty sadly. About, oh gosh, it's got to be about 10 years ago now. I was in the elementary school, maybe even more, 12 years ago. Um, and we had an accident. Two kids collided in the gym and it was first grade and it was a very fast first grade boy ran into a petite fragile first grade girl and she broke her femur. Oh. I mean it was it was really bad and as you know happens the school district was being sued and you know it's an unbelievably awful experience when somebody comes in to question how you do things and 
I was confident enough that I had taught all of the, you know, how to move safely in the gym concepts before we did this activity. But for a lawyer to pick up, or even your principal to pick up your plan book or your lesson plan and look at it without the years of education that we've had, to understand that you did the right thing and this was just an accident, it was awful. So I wrote this story, Zinni's Driving School, so that every child can pick up the book, every teacher, every parent, and every lawyer can pick up this book and know that I taught the lesson. They can just read the story, they only have to look at the lesson plans and know that I taught spatial awareness before I did any of these activities. Um, last year we had an accident on the playground and the lawyers came in to sue the school district about playground safety. And we teach playground safety at the beginning of every year, and we'd also taught the spatial awareness. And one of the things that the lawyer, you know, they asked was, well, do you teach it outside? And I, and I said to them, listen, when a child learns 2 plus 2 in the classroom, you do believe that they're going to add outside the classroom just like they did inside the classroom, right? You know, there should be a transfer that I taught spatial awareness in the gymnasium that when they go outside, just because they're outside doesn't mean that they shouldn't transfer the knowledge. So, right. yeah. I often say when I present on spatial awareness, um, because there's a lot of places that don't play tag games anymore because of this. But in the classroom, when a child adds 2 plus 2 and they put down 5, you take out your eraser, you erase it, and you put down 4. But when a child makes a mistake in the gymnasium, it's going to be physical, and sometimes it causes injury. But we don't stop teaching, right. chasing, fleeing, and sporting activities because somebody made a mistake. It's a mistake, and it's an accident, and that's going to happen. The best we can do is try to, to learn from it and teach ways that children don't get hurt. So that's what this story is about, if I can get it up to you. Hang on. I think I figured out how I'm doing this. Is it there? Um, not yet. No, we have the black. I see your cursor. Okay. There you're back. Now we're in the tunnel. Now you, if you click on something, there. So there it is. All right, so this is uh, Zinni's Driving School. Spatial awareness, locomotive skills, and safety with Zinni's Driving School. Every school year should begin with teaching elementary school students spatial awareness and safe speeds while moving in the gym. To teach these skills, start by reading Zinni's Driving School to your students. Zinni's Driving School is the story of a young alien girl on her very first day of driver education. <coughs> Throughout the story, Zinni learns where different speed limits are used. Meanwhile, your students are learning which locomotive skills are performed at slow, moderate, and fast speeds. The locomotive skills covered in the story and lessons include walk, hop, jump, gallop, slide, skip, jog, and run. After reading the story, the first lesson takes your students through their first day of driving school. By moving around the gym in hula hoops, the students begin to understand the concept of spatial awareness and the rules of safety while they practice different locomotor skills. Lessons two and three focus on Zinni's second day of driving school and her solar system field trip. Students learn the concept of interval training as they travel to and visit all of the planets of the solar system. Also included in this teacher's resource are rubrics for locomotor skills and ideas for meeting the Common Core Standards. For more literature enhanced physical education resources, visit leapincorporated.com. So that's the story. Okay, we're getting better at this. We yeah. <laughs> are.
So that's what we're doing now, spatial awareness and locomotor skills. And I, every year I'm so excited to do this because the kids get really into character and um, I really enjoy when they turn into aliens and they make their space sounds and we play space music, you know, the Jetsons theme and E.T. and Superman and Star Wars. So it's really a fun, uh, fun unit but with a lot of learning. So that's my sharing for this week. How about you? Um, I, yeah, I feel like I feel like I did a lot of talking. <laughs> well, it's very good talking. I learned a lot, and I'm very excited about. Um, now I feel like I got to go out and get those um, tablets in the gym. You know, our our third grades all have um, Chromebooks, so oh. I have access to them. And maybe I can come up with something to do with our Chromebooks for when we're out visiting you. Yeah. Oh. Um, oh, I think I, I, nothing's coming to mind, but. Yeah, I don't have anything that I'm thinking about either, but it, it's only a matter of time. <laughs> so, all right, so I guess we're logging off for today. All right. Thanks for sharing. Talk to you soon. All right, we'll talk to you soon. See ya. Bye.